I'm only going to approximate the bottom and I just need to eyeball this thing to get it. I should have marked the center a little bit better when that was on there. I'm just, I, I'm just looking down here to try to true this up just a little bit so it runs perfectly at 90 degrees. Touches. And I'm going to run this just like I did the top. I'm going to bring it around slightly. Get rid of that glue and then taper this off just a little bit. something fly off. Uh, I think I lost a piece of piece of bark. Maybe more than bark. Not a problem. I was out of the line of fire and it didn't hit me. And it was small. It wasn't going to hurt me anyway. Concave to it, not a lot, but just a bit so it'll lift off the table when it rests here. You can see that looks that looks good. Okay, I uh, think all I've got to do now. I've got a little bit of raised area here. I'm going to have to take that off with uh, the hand sander or touch it against the belt sander. Now what I want to do is use a texturing burr to kind of get some striations here. Uh, let me see what I've got and we'll, we'll, I'll check back with you. I'm not much of a carver so I don't have a lot of uh, fancy carving tools but I had a, took a class and I bought this carbide burr and it had a bunch of uh, had a lot of grit and dirt and stuff in there so I took my little handy little butane torch and just heated it up and burned that stuff off. So I think I pretty well got it clean. Um, hit it lick with his brass, brass brush. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to turn this thing on the fastest speed it's got, I think, on high. Try to use a pencil. And I'm just going to try to make some, some grooves down the side on that side and that side. And we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, I've definitely roughed it up. Uh, you can see that just a little bit. I think it. I think that's. Uh, that'll be an improvement when it gets a little uh, antique oil finish on it. Now I'll do it on this end off the camera. You don't need to see me do that. And then we'll uh, sand the bottom a little bit, and then we'll work on the lid. Okay, I've got this sanded nice and smooth on the top and the bottom, and I actually. Uh, uh, let me show you how I did this. I slightly concave the center where it's going to sit so it won't rock. And I just used the, uh, the edge of the drill and just keep, kept working it around toward the middle and it got rid of that little bit of damage area and it made it kind of slightly concave so it'll sit flat. So that's how that works. Now I'm going to... Uh, I found another glue block. That other one was too big and I didn't want to waste the end of it because I'm going to have to turn it down a little bit. This I don't worry about. Uh, so I'm going to use some uh, double stick tape and probably one piece would be enough but I'm gonna being a belts and suspenders kind of guy I'm gonna go ahead and put put two of them on here this double stick tape is really good stuff because this is Turner's tape this is not carpet tape it's not something you'll get at a uh, big box store and it works real well. The key to uh, holding power is leaving it on under pressure a little bit. We'll do that with the uh, tailstock. Now, I've got the smoothest side's going to go in here. I've already marked the center with that, uh, that awl, so I'm going to put some pressure on it with this. And all we got to do is center it up. 
and then we're going to leave it for at least uh, at least 10 minutes for it to get some really good holding power. Okay, it's set up at least 10 minutes. Now I'm going to turn this round and then we're going to uh, shape the bottom and then we'll, we'll reverse it and I'll, I'll show you an interesting trick for that a little bit later. Okay, using a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. Let me tell you, this uh, African blackwood is very dense and it will shine shine up just really nice. I'm just going to come in here a little bit. And now I can see a little better. Sand that up just a touch before we put the, put the beat grooves in there. Start with a little 180. Looks good. Now we're going to use a little bit of my favorite finishing stuff for this kind of thing. That's a Triple E Ultra Shine. This is great stuff from Australia. It's got a little bit of, of Triple E in it. They call it like rotten stone. And I'm just going to wipe that on there. And I'm going to be careful not to overheat this because uh, these exotic woods can check if you overheat them. And this is not going to need any finish. This shine is going to take care of it. I think I'll put. Uh oh. Having some problems with my switch on my lathe. It's going to cause me some problems for long. Okay. I think that will take care of it. I'm going to drill this out, quarter of an inch hole, to hold that little piece we're going to turn. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you how we're going to hold this thing when we reverse it. So we're going to reverse check, uh, reverse this again using the double uh, stick tape. I pulled the other tape off before I realized this was the approach I was going to use. I could have used the tape that was already on there. It would have been good for another, another piece. So this is going to center it. Just, just like last time, it's, we're going to... Leave it chucked for a little while, give it 10 minutes to hold, and it's only holding on that one little piece in the middle, but that's going to be enough. We're just going to shape the outside, the tailstock sport, and then we'll finish it off. Okay, we've waited our 10 minutes or so, now we're just going to round over the top, and because this is perpendicular grain, it's just like the outside of a bowl going from uh, uh, the center to the outside. needs is some sanding and smoothing over the top so we're going to take this off right here 180 work through the grits and a little bit of 500 with the grain now we're going to use a little UBU triple E shine that puppy up to a fresh area.
Okay, next, we're going to take that little piece of uh, scrap we had. This cone works great for some things, but it acts as a big wedge, and I'm afraid it's going to split this cherry. So I'm going to just switch here. Okay. This thing to high speed. I'm use the bowl gouge. This this uh, this collet chuck a great deal, but I tell you when it when it it comes in handy for little small things like finials. Make sure I got a good fit here. Oh yeah. I did a review of this. You can look up that video if you're interested. This is a very nice, very nice item. I think I'll go that deep. Switching to a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. I should be able to get a little finer finish with this skew. I'll sport it a little bit, my finger. do I'm gonna put a coat of sanding sealer on here dribble some uh, CA and then then finish hope it hoping that'll, that'll hold it well enough so we'll come back to that after I I'll, I'll go ahead and finish shaping rounding this off and uh, finishing it and part this off okay here's the finished product I cut the uh, handle finial off with that Japanese flush cut saw hope you enjoyed it if you did share it with others Thumbs up, give it a like, give it a like, and if you enjoy it, really enjoy this, come back and be a subscriber so you get notified for future ones. Till next time. Bye.